when we figured out variation of parameters, it might have occurred to you that uh, there didn't really seem to be anything special about the equation being second order. If the equation were higher order, you just get bigger systems of equations and sort of messier formulas for u sub 1 prime and u sub 2 prime and u sub 3 prime and so on. And that's true. Uh, so I'd like to show you just really quickly uh, how it works out in for higher order uh, inhomogeneous linear differential equations. So uh, such an equation would look like this. So again, we, uh, we need to make it so that the leading coefficient function is 1. So if there is something that isn't 1 right here, just divide through by it. Uh, and that gives you this sort of differential equation. Uh, the first thing you do, just like in the second order case, is find a fundamental set of solutions to the uh, associated homogeneous equations. So these y sub 1 through y sub n uh, these are going to be known functions from now on, so we can do calculations with them. Um, since this is an order n equation, a fundamental set will have n solutions in it. So that's why we have to go from y sub 1 all the way out to y sub n. It's because this is an order n equation. OK, just like in the second order case, we have to make some extra assumptions. Well, we don't have to make these assumptions, but it, is going, it makes it easier to find um, our functions u because right, the more equations you have, the more specific you're being about what you want the u's to be. So we make these additional assumptions. Um, if you look at this first one, this is the same assumption as we made in the second order case, but since we're going to have more unknown functions u, we get to make more assumptions about uh, equations those u's will satisfy, and these are, these are the appropriate equations, it turns out. There are n minus one of these. Now, when you take these and then calculate, take your uh, uh, guess for what the particular solution would look like, which is this, and plug these into the differential equation, when you calculate these derivatives, our extra assumptions simplify what the derivatives of y sub p will be. But when you plug everything in, you get one more equation to add to this system, and it's this one. Again, uh, this is just if n is 2, this is exactly the uh, equation we got from the order 2 case when we worked out variation of parameters. All right, putting this all together gives you a system of n algebraic equations and n unknown functions, the u sub whatever primes, and you can solve this system of equations. Now, since this is an n by n system of equations, it's extremely helpful to have some uh, linear algebra under your belt so that you don't have to work through some ungodly mess of, of solving this in the general case. And uh, in linear algebra, there's a nice result called Kramer's rule that basically spits out a formula for what the solution to this system is. And it works like this. Uh, u sub k prime, so k could be anything from 1 up to n here. Uh, it turns out that it's a ratio of two determinants. The de denominator is just the Ronskian, right? So uh, this Ronskian is just the determinant of y sub 1 up to y sub n. And then, right, each row has different orders of, de of derivatives down to the uh, I guess, n minus first derivative. So that's what the Ronskian is. But this numerator is actually exactly the same as the Ronskian, except you replace, a, uh, you rep for w sub k, you replace the kth column with the right-hand side of your system of linear equations, which is just 0 down through f of x. So for example, w sub 1 is the determinant of, right, we're going to replace the, since this is w sub 1, we replace the first column with zeros and f of x. And then everything else is the same. So that would be y sub 2 down to the n minus first derivative of y sub 2 and out to y sub n and the n minus first derivative of y sub n. So that's what the numerators are for our uh, u sub k primes.
And indeed, if you look back at the uh, formulas we got for u sub 1 prime and u sub 2 prime in the order 2 case, if you work out these determinants, w sub 1 and w sub 2, you get exactly the formulas that, that we worked out for these two. So uh, this is the, the general general case here. Okay, so now we have a formula for u, for all of the u, the derivatives of all of the u's. So just integrate each one of them to find the u's themselves, and then you can form a particular solution. Of course, since we now that we have a particular solution, we already found the complementary solution. So then you can write the general solution to the linear inhomogeneous equation of order n.